Hello everyone. I am Mike Kaganski, software engineer. Work Hello everyone. I am Mike Kaganski, software engineer working for Collabora Productivity, mostly working on its core part. Uh, this talk is about the feature that uh, is new in LibreOffice 7.2, uh, multi-column support in text boxes, shapes and other graphical objects. This is the first time when I pre-record uh, a talk for a conference, so please excuse if I do something uh, incorrect or funny. First of all, I want to tell that I'm glad to be part of the great team of professionals which Collabora Productivity is. It is in a unique position, making commercial customers happy and at the same time bringing the improvements resulting from that uh, to benefit everyone in the open source project. The feature that we have implemented is the perfect example of this mutual benefit uh, that commercial customers and other users get because of collaborative commitment to invest its expertise in, uh, and uh, do all the development is in open source. And I am proud that I am part of it. Let's proceed to the multi column support in LibreOffice. And first of all, Let's discuss what was supported prior to LibreOffice 7.2. If you work with Writer, you possibly know that multiple column is itself not a new feature in LibreOffice. It was available uh, long before uh, in Writer. Uh, it already had it in uh, the very first release of OpenOffice.org and I suppose it was available uh, before that. Uh, writer's columns are really very powerful, useful, configurable, uh, far beyond what is available in our competitors. Uh, in uh, writer's pages, in writer's sections, in writer's frames, you may use columns and set uh, them very finely but not in graphical objects like text boxes shapes uh, all that uses edit engine the component uh, that uh, does not rely on writers layout machinery uh, here you see a text document with a section uh, that uses uh, two uh, columns uh, also, you see a dialog uh, to configure the columns and you may see how rich the configuration is, where you can uh, set up uh, distribution of the text or uh, the uh, form of the separator line, something that is absent in our competitors. Uh, it was already present in the uh, writer before uh, the 7.2 release. But other modules, uh, Calc, uh, uh, Impress, Draw, uh, didn't have this multi-column support because they didn't use uh, writer's uh, layout machinery as was already stated. Uh, they all rely on Edit Engine uh, to do that. And since we discuss here the development that brought this uh, capability into these modules, uh, the question is, did they actually need this support? Uh, or <laughs> maybe it was okay without it? Let's see. I want to focus on Impress uh, as the module that uh, benefits most visibly when uh, any new feature uh, appears that uh, provides new layout capabilities. When uh, authors create slides, they might want to put their uh, text into columns. 
and they would expect naturally that the text would flow freely from one column into the other, which is what uh, columns are about. At the same time, they want uh, the good stuff that they already have with the boxes in the impress. For instance, uh, uh, allowing them to automatically scale the text to fit the size of the box. Uh, but that wasn't able directly uh, and a uh, user would need to create, for instance, two uh, text boxes or a table with two columns and then uh, you would need to uh, type uh, text, uh, move it from one uh, element to the other, from one cell to the other to distribute them. You would need to uh, make sure uh, uh, to apply same properties to the two elements so that the text looks consistent. When you uh, edit the text, you naturally uh, need to uh, do this all again because, uh, you, for instance, scaling might need uh, adjustments. Uh, all that would need to be uh, done manually. Uh, the other aspect uh, requiring the new feature uh, was uh, interoperability uh, with other suits that already provide uh, multi-column support uh, in presentations. Uh, when LibreOffice users uh, get documents created in those uh, suits, they naturally want to see them as they uh, were intended to be, but that wasn't possible uh, before 7.2. Indeed, we uh, tried to work around the missing feature and uh, tried, for instance, to import uh, multi-column texts into tables, uh, trying to figure uh, uh, how to distribute the text over s the different cells, but that couldn't be done perfectly. And uh, often the text ended up being distributed uh, in a different way, not as it was intended to be. Here is uh, the screenshot of Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, with a slide with two column layout and uh, a configuration dialog. So naturally we needed to provide ways to import and export uh, the data uh, to uh, allow our users uh, to uh, interoperate with users using other office suits. So uh, now we see that uh, the need is real, let's proceed to the change itself. When you start working on a new big feature, uh, you uh, need quite some effort. Uh, the feature takes much time, it requires developers to uh, work for weeks and even months and indeed that means that uh, you may only be sure that the feature will be uh, completed at some stage when someone supports the development and uh, makes it possible for developers to focus on their task. When a commercial company gets a support contract and they uh, listen to their employees, they create support tickets to resolve problems that their employees have. The company does just that. It makes the difficult uh, development possible, which otherwise could be totally impossible for a volunteer. Uh, it, it could be just too huge for a volunteer who uh, need uh, uh, to eat 
in the first place. And we glad to have Suze, our valued customer, who keep uh, helping the whole community to improve LibreOffice over the years. They are the ones who made this development possible. Thank you. When implementing the new feature, uh, you need to check if it would bring changes, possibly incompatible changes, to the file format that is used uh, in the Office Suite. And we studied ODF, uh, if it has uh, required support or if we need to extend it to uh, support the new feature. And it turned out that ODF already has all the required support for it. It already defined uh, that graphical objects may uh, have columns element, uh, element in it. So that was a nice surprise for me. And I want to thank all the wise people working in the ODF technical committee in Oasis. Thank you. Then we uh, proceeded to analyze uh, the scope of the task. If we needed to implement all the rich feature set implemented in Writer uh, in the uh, columns in graphical objects. And uh, after uh, discussing the possibilities, we decided to not implement everything that Writer has and focus and limit the task to the uh, simple uh, same width columns without separators. Uh, there were two reasons for this decision. First, keeping things simple uh, allowed us to uh, provide the new feature faster. And second, possibly the most important, was that having two complex feature set implemented from the start would uh, create another uh, compatibility problem, this time in the opposite direction. The users would be unable to save uh, these features into external file formats, which would make them uh, which would uh, make it difficult for them to share their documents with the users of other office suits. So uh, we decided to uh, limit our task uh, and uh, additionally it was unclear if this uh, set of features was uh, actually uh, demanded uh, so uh, that would justify the development. The next nice part of the task was to implement the document model for the feature and to make sure that uh, it gets stored to and imported from uh, the file formats. Uh, the two file formats, first of all, it is our native ODF and uh, the second, uh, the OXML uh, that uh, Microsoft Office uses. Uh, I really enjoyed how well engineered our existing code was when I worked on this feature. Uh, the code that already handled this task for writer was so well engineered that it was very easy to reuse it. To uh, it needed very few changes, uh, very few modifications to make it work for broader set of objects. We uh, made some uh, refactoring to move uh, it, um, uh, to, to make it uh, reachable from um, uh, edit engine and it worked. I, I, I always enjoy working uh, with a code that is 
so well engineered because uh, it makes the task easier. It allows to do more good stuff in less time. And I, I'm very, very gl glad to be able to work together with brilliant engineers like Miklos, who, uh, who is always ready to share their expertise and point to ways to avoid uh, inventing a wheel. Uh, it's him who pointed me to this well-written code. Uh, thank you. Uh, one thing that required a completely new development from our side was uh, the text layout itself. We needed to uh, make quite a few changes uh, and uh, most uh, demanding part was uh, the new iterative algorithm to uh, distribute lines of text over several uh, columns. When you implement an iterative layout algorithm, one of the biggest problems is to make sure that this algorithm ends at some point, that it never hangs. Uh, and since we uh, changed uh, pre uh, an algorithm that was previously linear into uh, iterative, we needed uh, to make sure that uh, it ca can't freeze. Uh, so I am glad that we were able to do that. I am sure that our algor algorithm never hangs. Uh, it works reliably and that's what I'm proud with. In the end, there were a number of commits implementing the feature in steps. There were an initial set of uh, merged patches. Then uh, there were some more uh, patches uh, that uh, fixed uh, some omissions, uh, bugs. Uh, and uh, now the change is ready for everyone uh, to enjoy the end result in LibreOffice 7.2. You may see that uh, the boxes in Impress, as uh, <laughs> visible on this uh, slide, as well as in all other models, got the power to distribute your text over the columns uh, just as you would expect. Uh, the configuration of this feature is very simple. It is hosted in the text uh, um, properties dialog where other text properties were already hosted. Uh, also it is available on the sidebar and uh, you may see the comparison of the uh, dialogs used in Microsoft Office and in LibreOffice 7.2. You may see the parity of features in the two Office suits. So what's left to do? There are a number of issues filed uh, against this new uh, feature in Bugzilla. It is natural, it is a new feature, it is a big feature and uh, some uh, problems are inevitable in the first steps. Uh, and especially so when the feature was just uh, published to the uh, wide uh, testing. But one of the most important issues there is, in my opinion, bug 140022, uh, which is about uh, still unresolved compatibility problem between Microsoft Office and uh, our new uh, implementation in LibreOffice. Uh, to resolve it, uh, we need some missing bits in uh, initialization of edit engine. And recently, Noel Grandin has made some nice changes uh, toward this. Thank you very much for that. Uh, yet more work is needed uh, on this uh, problem as well as on other uh, still unresolved problems uh, with uh, the new feature. Yet. I am glad that the feature is functional and is ready for you to test. Please do that. This is basically 
the end of my report about working on this new feature that is landed in LibreOffice 7.2. The feature that is brought to you thanks to Collabora that magically makes commercial support to benefit the community. The task was really a great pleasure. Thank you for your uh, attention that allowed me to uh, feel all that pleasure again as if as I working on it the second time. Now it's time for questions and I am, uh, I am um, sure that I am ready there in the room waiting for them to answer. Thank you very much.